Hey YouTube, welcome back. Um, today we talk about single point of failure. So um, a single point of failure in distribute system is a component or part of the system that if uh, if it fails can cause um, the entire system to become unavailable or um, or like um, uh, mal malfunction, like it can't work anymore. In other words, it's a critical component that if the uh, if the compromise uh, can lead to a system-wide outage. Um, a single point of failure are significantly concerned in distributed systems because they are the uh, under, um, undermine, uh, undermine the system's reliability and fault tolerance. So what, let's try to, okay, we know a single point of failure is a part of the system is when this system goes off, the full system goes off. What are parts, what, what this will look like? Like, let's say, take one example. Let's say that we have a client and the client was connected with server. And let's say multi-servers and, uh, and we have one database, only one centralized database. So a single point of failure here, if this, for this one uh, centralized database, because if, uh, um, if a distributed system relies on a single centralized database, and that database becomes unavailable or uh, uh, or, or um, experiences data uh, corruption, it can de it can disrupt the entire system's functionality. You know, if the, if the database, <coughs> sorry, I'm still ill. If the entire database went down, it's done. It's done. You cannot get any data at all. Let's take another example. Let's say that we have. Um, uh, Let's say we have server one, server zero, and we have multiple servers. And server two and server one, we have we have multiple multi, uh, more than one web server to make sure that our system is available. And with these servers, the client cannot connect which is one of them. So we have in between like a load balancer, but only one load balancer. And this load balancer is responsible for distributing all the incoming requests across the servers, as you can see. And we have in and we, we, we instead of having one database, we will have maybe a master slave database to make sure that we have we don't have a single point of failure. Master and master DB. And we have mm, slave db zero and slave db one, and they are connected with the web servers. Both of them, the web servers connected with the the master databases and the slaves. So basically, right now, if the master database if the master database went down one of the slave could 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 act as a master if the slave went down the other slave could take the workload so but we still have here a, a single point of failure which is the load balancer as you can see here so in a system with multiple servers if a single load balancer is responsible for routing all incoming traffic and it fails users um, may not be able to uh, access the system even if the servers themselves are operational or like they are load working great so the uh, a good thing is that to use, to use like some sort of api gateway and multiple load balancers to make sure that if one of them failed the other um the other system could work with it um other one we have if we have like if you have if we have maybe one authentication or authorization service if you have only one <coughs> Sorry guys. So if a single authentication or authorization service is used, its failure could prevent users from uh, uh, or uh, from users from accessing the resources. 
um, maybe um, maybe if uh, a single point of error could be like shared resources because shared resources such as shared disk or uh, a storage system can be a single point of failure if the shared resources fails it can impact all uh, all the services or nodes uh, that depends on it so there's a lot of examples of on a single point of failure and we just said three or four of them and I guess by these examples maybe you have understanding of what is a single point of uh, what is a single point of failure but what is a such a concern because in system design interviews you find that a single point of failure it's a huge concern in any system so a system um, a single point of failure is really a huge concern let me just for i would say for four reasons the first one is that the reliability because Oh, no. Sorry. Because um, the they reduce the reliability of a distributed uh, system because the system's overall over, uh, over availability is dependent on uh, the reliable of a single component because if this component goes off, our system is done. It is not, it's, our system cannot, uh, cannot behave, cannot uh, interact with users so it's it's concern in reliability also it's concern in scalability because they limit the system's ability to scale horizontally because they cannot they can't distribute the load um, it effectively and also um, they cannot handle all the cases quite easily the fault tolerance because they undermine they undermine fault tolerance which is critical feature of distributed system without fault tolerance the system is vulnerable into uh, to distribution to disruption also also it's um resilient it's um oh, wait a minute, give me a minute. it's it's not that good when it comes to resilience because the system becomes less resilient resilient in 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 the face of uh, unexpected failures of this or disasters and to address single point of failure uh, the architects and engineers designing distribute systems <coughs> implement various strategies including uh, redundancy load balancing failover mechanism and the use of distributed databases and services these strategies aim to minimize the impact of failures and improve the overall reliability and availability of the system so that's it for this video and i hope you like my content if you like my content you should subscribe and hit the notification bell so never miss a video and see you in future problem